Hi everyone, this is Ricky Spencer and welcome to another of our series, Voices for the Sociology of Media in Australia. And today we're speaking with an incredible human being, uh, Ben Gretz. And Ben is uh, the Festive Creative Director for the Sydney World Pride. Uh, ben is a descendant of the Idjua, I hope I pronounced that right, but you'll correct me, and Malak Malak clans in the Northern Territory and of Badu Islands in the Torres Strait. With over 20 years of creative practice spanning in both First Nations and LGBTIQA plus identities. Recent career highlights include artistic director of the Arafura Games Ceremonies, creative producing independent and for companies including Ibujiri Theatre and founding with collaborators Murray's Payne, Hardy Passport, an LGBTIQ and First Nations event production house with diversity and inclusion, fun and fabulousness at its heart. He has a strong knowledge of the arts in Australia and networks extending across oceans to First Nations practitioners in Aratora in New Zealand, Turtle Island, North America and Taiwan. He is the founder of Darwin's First Nations Festival, Garamalang, and has been instrumental in the organisation and profile racing of Darwin Pride. Wow, Ben, welcome to our space. So honoured to have you here today. Thank you so much. And that makes me feel really old. Oh, don't feel old. Don't feel old. So, Ben, your journey in the creative space has been, I know, something that you've been passionate about. And I've been following you quite a long time. Not stalking you, but following no. your, your love of um, uh, creativeness and expressing yourself through movement and arts. Yeah. What led you to your current role at the Sydney World Pride? Gosh, it's interesting. Um, I've been asked that question before, and I think it's really just a journey of um, one of discovery, as you mentioned, a passion for the creative sector, a passion for the arts, um, and I think my queerness. And so, um, yeah, it's been an incredible moment to be able to bring all of those things together over the many years. I'm um, growing up in Darwin as a young queer boy, you know, always feeling different and, um, you know, that, it, it, you know, I didn't fit into the sport and the kind of thing that was happening there and and having to leave Darwin when I was 17 to go and pursue the, the arts and then really left for many years. And so I didn't return until um, I was an adult, really, and went back and, um, yeah, kind of faced a lot of the things I was running away from, including coming out to my family mm. and, you know, um reconciling all of that stuff that journey part of my life and yeah so it's been a it's been a very long um you know interesting journey through queerness through culture through first nations um but but and through the creative sector i think that's what's always really kept me and and my, why i'm in this position now is because i have a love for the creative sector and the arts and and wanting to know why things how things get um created and how you know you put a show on how you create festivals um, all of the kind of different dynamics of of the creative sector, which really inspires me. Mm. And one of the things that's really exciting for me um, is when I found out about Sydney World Pride and got right into it and then seeing all the activities. And it's like a really first time I saw how the queer uh, First Nations communities uh, being represented and being given a platform. Can you tell us a little bit about, well, what is Sydney World Pride? Yeah, so Sydney World Pride is a global event, which is, uh, we're calling it a mega Mardi Gras, and um, World Prides happen approximately every two years in another part of the world. They've been going since 2000, um, and they're global events, so global Pride events. So they're a bit like the Olympics. You have to bid um, at the at the local age, uh, the um, AGM of Interpride to um, host a World Pride. So in October 19, Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras went over to Athens and I was a part of the team that went over there to bid to host um, World Pride. We were the underdogs. We were against Montreal who had much more money and much more kind of um, people working on it and Houston. And we we came through and we won. Um, and four years later, here we are. So it's a global event taking place in Sydney. Um, it's a 17-day festival, over 300 events um, 
multiple different venues and locations across Greater Sydney, including Newcastle mm. um, as a regional event. So, yeah, as you mentioned, we've got a strong focus on First Nations, but also on the Asia Pacific region. Um, and because it is the first World Pride to ever take place in the Southern Hemisphere. So, you know, it's, it's history making, it's exciting, it's huge. Um, you know, there's not long to go. I'm excited, but tired <laughs> mm. and, and ready for it to, to happen. It's an incredible event, and I'm also counting down the days. One of the things that I'm really excited about, and I want to have a quick chat here today with you, uh, for all my colleagues around Australia listening, um, the Human Rights Conference, which I think is it's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience in Australia. Could you give our audience a little bit of a rundown of what, what is the Human Rights Conference and why it's important? being yeah absolutely yeah absolutely and i think um as a part of world prides there's a few things that you um it's compulsory to do so you need to do an opening a closing a pride march and a human rights conference and so this is really one of our cornerstone events for sydney world pride and um you know where where uh, it's over three days at the icc um and it's going to be an incredible moment where we're bringing together uh, all the all the people that need to be in that room, so community members, um, activists, advocates, um, change makers, politicians, um, all the people who who really need to be in that space to really uh, make changes within within our uh, LGBTQA plus sister girl brother boy communities, and we have to remember as you know pride festivals. Yes, there is the glitter, there's the parties, there's all the fun, but at the core of it, we're still fighting for um, our equality. And a big part of the human rights conference, obviously, is about ensuring that our quality and our voices and representations are are heard, seen, um, and and is about creating that change. So you know we've got um, thirty. Um, brother boy sister girls coming from all across Australia to be a part of that we've got scholars from all around the world taking part we've got international speakers taking part in that so you know it's going to be um, an experience it's going to be an opportunity for people to um, speak to connect to change um, and and as I mentioned it is our cornerstone event so it's going to be one of one of the things that I think people are going to really remember from this Sydney World Pride one of the things I'm really excited about is the great opportunity for networking, being able to meet people who have the same passion, you know, who are looking at how can we position our spaces um, in mainstream heteronormative, you know, scholarly worlds and everyday living. So that, and that's one of the highlights. And I'm just wondering uh, if there are people who are listening to this, are there any tickets available at this last minute, Ben, or uh, wait lists do you have or anything like that? Well, unfortunately, it is now allocation exhausted, but um, people can tune in for free. So you oh, can um, okay. tune in. Yes. Yeah. And I think the details of that will be coming soon. But yeah, people will are able to access it. And I think there is also day day um, passes still available as well. And all the information will be on the website. Fantastic. And of course, we'll put the links on for everyone here. Um, and of course, you know, for those of us that might watch this later too, uh, you'll be able to go back and see because I'm sure there'll be reports or something people can get access to about preliminaries that was we've spoken to. And I can imagine there'd be a lot of really interesting things. Um, ben, let's also talk about um, getting there, uh, hosting such a large event. Um how long did it take in the planning of such an event? <laughs> As I mentioned, look, we went, we we um, won the bid in October nineteen. So in theory, we have been working on it. Well, the people were working on it before the bid as well to actually put the bid together. So, so it has been over four year journey to get here. But in terms of the organisation starting up, that was at the start of twenty twenty one, and so two years basically we've been. Um, working together. And, and it's really important to point out as well as that we um, are a one-off event purpose for purpose um, organization. So at the end of Sydney World Pride, Sydney World Pride will dissolve. Um, oh, and, okay. and yeah, and so everything that we, all the, I suppose there's a lot of legacy pieces and a lot of those legacy pieces and items and things that we create will then um, 
be handed over to Mardi Gras, Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras. So, um, yeah, Sydney World Pride will cease to exist. Um, I'll be looking for a job. Um, but, you know, so I say to people, what's been um, a really interesting part of this journey is we've had to build the organisation as we're also delivering an event. So when I first started in March 2021, we didn't have an office space. We didn't have chairs, desks, computers. We didn't have policies, you know, a HR department. All of that had to be built while we were we're building the festival as well so um that just made it a little bit extra challenging but you know we've got an incredible team now we've got over you know 60 employees working with us um as i mentioned we've got over 300 events so you know we're all on track to have a have an incredible time but it has been an experience that i've never experienced before i've learned a lot um i'm very proud of where we are what we've achieved um and just looking forward to it now like i'm like you know it's like christmas <laughs> and you know what the lovely thing i was thinking of all the uh first nations young people watching you know maybe it's in darwin or some other space it gives hope you know that to think that you know i can be accepted i can be me in in a in a, in a world order that they have a position you know that they can celebrate beautifulness in being oh, absolute absolutely and i think that's a big part of it is you know we've got a six day Mari Marang Buput, Many Brave Hearts, um, First Nations Gathering Space, taking over Carriage Works. Oh. So, you know, yeah, so we've got like, that's that's a queer black takeover of Carriage Works where we've got free events, ticketed events, art, culture, um, food, um, and really for pe our community, but also others to really come and immerse yourself in, in First Nations queer culture. Mm. We've got our Black and Deadly Gala concert at the Opera House, you know, an incredible lineup of artists that we're really going to reclaim that space. And exactly like you're saying, like a big part of this for me is about creating that visibility access, but also for young people that can't be here, you know, to actually see themselves. We've got viewing parties happening in, um, in the Kimberleys, oh. in um, Queensland, um, in Wagga Wagga, um, where people, where young mob can access, you know, the event without having to be here. Um, and we did a road show. So we did, um, yes, we went, we did a, yeah, yes. yeah, so we did a road show around the country. So, you know, a big part of this is, is, is connecting with mob in different parts of the, of the world. And, you know, me coming from Darwin, a, a regional town, you know, it's important that, you know, uh, our voices and our visibility, uh, and we're included really, because, um, you know, it, it is hard to be in those places and feel like you're the only one. So anything we can do to make people feel that they, they're they enough and they're included and they belong is is a big thing for Sydney World Pride. And I, I love that what you just mentioned too about the idea that if you are a young person and you're in a regional remote space that you can be safe, that you don't have to go to Sydney because for whatever reason, you know, you're not ready to come out to your family or you just want to, you've got that safety where you can be, and but you can watch that virtually and feel that connection, that deep spiritual connection. So I really love that. And the other thing that when you're speaking comes to mind, I was thinking for teachers that are, you know, out in Sydney, consider this as a wonderful experience for your students um, to really, as you're saying, to be enmeshed in culture, to ask questions, you know, what does it mean to be First Nations and queer? You know, and as you said, looking at the artwork, the representations, it does build a rich tapestry of ideas that you can take back into the classroom and really um, disrupt that sort of stereotyping and imagery that we've had for years to kind of constantly deal with. So I feel that there are so many benefits from this event that are going to take place. And I'm really hoping that a lot of people listening will somehow become involved. Um, and also for people with disabilities. And I know that I've been reading that you've had people working on that. So there'll be support, I imagine, as well, Ben, for people with disabilities. Absolutely. Like we've got, um, a, you know, we've got a um, disability um, action group that we've been working with, advisory group. We've got a, um, an accessibility manager that's been looking over the entire festival, um, Joanna um is on our advisory who is a um, black queer um, deaf person so you know throughout everything we're doing we're ensuring that there is accessibility and and you know trying to do it so so it is so so it is inclusive for everyone really and I think as part of this series that I've now been doing for close to I think two years 
this is one of my highlights today because it really showcases voices. You know, we've got now queer black voices who are in leadership positions like yourself showcasing to not just Australia but the world, isn't it? It's, it's the whole thing I think I'm trying to get my head around. How many countries, again, Ben, or, or roughly do we know that are involved in, in the World Pride? That oh well, <laughs> well, Interpride is a is a global organisation who is the licensee of um, World Prides, and um, a lot of them are going to be coming to Sydney World Pride as well. So there's representation from all all across the globe, really, which is um, very exciting. And like you said, like you know, to have that visibility of First Nations, you know, from the outset. And I've got our beautiful program here right in front of me, which um, oh, our design hey. our. De- I've got the blurry background on, so but oh, um, yeah, yep. the des- the design is by Jessica Johnson, who is a queer um, First Nations artist. So you know, to to the first thing you see, you know, um, is a First Nations visibility in the program. I think is something that we we're, we're also proud of. Ben, it's been an incredible chat, and all I can say to everybody, really do tune in. Um, ben has given us the information about and we'll put them in the links with this where you can see it will be online i presume there will be be later on there'll be lots of uh chats about it and all but more importantly the artifacts but if you can get to sydney go and if you are a teacher or a researcher in sydney take the time to go and meet uh uh, our communities uh, embrace it you know ask questions you know and really celebrate with us important visibility because it's a once in a lifetime experience there'll be people coming from all over the world so you will really get for the first time and I can't speak high enough Ben it's been wonderful speaking with you I wish you success um, and I know you know you I just hope you know you're going to be fabulous on the day and I hope you do celebrate and we can't wait to see all the pictures and that. So sending my love to all of um, Sydney World Pride. Thank oh, you. thank you for having me.